Museum of History 25th Annual American Indian Heritage Celebration. Our presenter, Dr. Marvin Richardson, will begin in just a moment, but we wanna start with a few notes. Remember to ask questions in the chat and we will do our best to respond to them and share with our presenter. We have many additional resources about the American Indian Heritage Festival and our North Carolina Museum of History website. Please visit ncaihc.com. We thank the following sponsors of the North Carolina Museum of History Foundation helping to make this event possible. Please stay tuned for a few slides. Okay, now we're ready to get started. We welcome Dr. Marvin Richardson of the Tutelo Saponi tribe. He is going to share some very history with us around language. So Dr. Richardson, start with us and tell us what you're sharing with us today. Nahan pipi, Dr. Marvin Richardson minkila kewa. Mima halawa saponi esang. Hollister, North Carolina, Waitiwa. Good day. My name is Dr. Marvin or Marty Richardson. I am from the Hollowas Pony Indian Tribe and I live in Hollister, North Carolina. Today, we will be talking about the Tudelo Saponi language and efforts of revitalization of our language and also talking about why we have to revitalize our language. What are the factors? that come into play, historical and linguistic factors that have come into play for us to revitalize our language. Tudelo Saponi, this is the language we will be discussing today. But I wanna share with you a little bit about language in general here in the state of North Carolina and also in other areas nearby, um, like Virginia. A lot of these tribes um, in, in the past and even in present day moved back and forth. There was no state line for many of our people. And we have three basic linguistic stocks or linguistic groups here in North Carolina, and I'll write them down. So here we have three different uh, linguistic stocks. There is no such thing as the Indian language or one Native American language. There are many different languages. There are approximately 700 American Indian tribes in North America, and all of them, um, many of them speak different languages. And we have in North Carolina and also in Virginia, three main different linguistic stocks. These are Algonquian, Iroquoian, and Suwon. Today, we will be focusing mostly on Suwon. My tribe, the Halawasaponi Indian tribe, descends from these three different linguistic stocks. But we, also, we are also Saponi. The main tribes that our tribe descends from are the Nansamon, the Saponi, and the Tuscarora. And as I mentioned, all three of these, those tribes are from different linguistic stocks. But our tribe has essentially adopted the Tudelo Saponi language, which is from the Suwon group. So somebody asked, why am I speaking English? I am an American Indian man, and why am I speaking English? Why am I not speaking in my native tongue? Well, there are many different factors, historical and linguistic factors that go into that. The first one, of course, would be the fact that our tribe descends from three different linguistic stocks which means that over time, our people had to learn a new language in order to communicate with each other or learn each other's languages, which they did back in the day. Um, other factors that come into play are disease. Um, much like the COVID uh, pandemic we have today, 
our people encountered diseases to which they had no immunity. And essentially those diseases wiped out approximately 90% of our native people. And that happened all throughout North and South America. Warfare, um, both disease and warfare, warfare are factors in reducing the population and reducing the power of native people to resist colonization. Culture change. Europeans, Africans, and Asians, when they came to North America, they brought with them disease, they brought with them new materials and, and ways of thought, and they interacted with our people and basically changed their material and cultural, and, and their cultural aspects um, over time. Europeans brought with them Christianity, and so they really pushed Christianity on our people, and today most Native peoples in uh, North, North Carolina are actually Christians. Again, tribal amalgamation, different tribes coming together um, and then speaking English as a way to communicate. And then the last factor I mentioned right now would be education. And so over time, our people were educated and, and most of the time, essentially all the time, education was done uh, through English. And that's how our people learn English. So in all languages, the basic aspect of language is sounds. And we, in our language, of course, we have sounds, but our language was originally not written down. Um, when the colonists came here, they started writing in English our language down. And that's how today we have materials to work with in order to revitalize our language. And so we have our vowels. We have our vowels here, and we have nasal vowels. Okay, so our vowels, um, they are pronounced like this. A, E, A, O, U. A, E, A, O, U. Then we have our nasal vowels. Nasal vowels are said through the nose. And so we have ah, e, on. Ah, e, on. We also have our consonants, and I'll quickly write them down. These are our regular consonants. And most of these sounds are very similar to English. Um, of course, in English, um, one symbol or representation of a, of a letter um, in the alphabet may have a few different pronunciations. For example, uh, we have our P here in our language. In English, a P can uh, have various different sounds. And I'll, I'll come back to that in just a second. So in our language, we have two different types of consonants. We have aspirated consonants and we have regular consonants. And the difference is the representation of a small h, which means that you're letting out a puff of air when you say that sound. A good representation of that would be the word for happy in English. And so that's a double P, but the P sound in that word uh, does not release that puff of air. Whereas in English, if you say the word pi, then you can see where you let out a puff of air. And that's the representation of this. So um, one example of an aspirated K in English will be when you say kite. And so those are the different representations. Um, 
There are other sounds in Tootless Pony that do not occur in English, which will be the X, the symbol of the X. And that's <laughs> and so that's the sound for X. An example of a word in for that would be our word for friend. My friend. So that's an example. Um, the glottal stop. This is a fancy linguistic term, which basically means you cut off the puff of air, um, cut off the air in your voice box. For instance, if you say, uh-oh, that little stop where it cuts off the air is this sound. An example of that in our language, sort of a fictional example, would be, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. So that's an example of some of the sounds. As I mentioned, um, or didn't mention yet, but the C with the little mark over it, that's a CH sound. And this is a sound almost like a, G, a J. Whereas this is a harder sound like church in English. So that's just a little bit about the sounds in the language. And this is a very short session, very short video. So I, I certainly cannot go through all of the nuances of our sounds and of our language. So I'm giving you the brief version of it. Tutelosa Pony 101 here today in Raleigh. So once again, um, I mentioned that we are revitalizing our language. On top of amalgamated tribes or tribes that merge together, um, we also have other issues as it relates to language. And for our language to survive, we, um, we need for elders and others to pass that language down. Um, and so when that didn't happen and we don't have fluent speakers here today, um, we, we will never say that our language is extinct. We just say that it is sleeping and that we have awakened it. And that's what we are doing today. And so how do we overcome that? Well, there are certain languages, as I mentioned, the Suwon linguistic uh, stock. There are many other languages that have much more of the language written down. And so one way that we can do it is to do a comparison between those language, languages to see what the original word was in the Suwon. You know, when there was only one Suwon speaking tribe, what was the original word? And over time, by comparing languages, we can see what our word would have been. And so we know there are certain sound changes that have occurred in many different languages. And so that's one way to overcome this. Another way to do it is to make new words. Now, all languages, in order to be viable, must modernize themselves. They must make new words. For example, today I am talking with you over the internet. We had to have a word for internet. Um, we are using a computer to broadcast this video right now. We had to come up with a word for computer. We are using a camera. We had to use and come up with a word for camera. And so native languages are no different. Languages that have fluent speakers now, they come up with new words all the time to describe the materials or the concepts in order to talk with each other. And I know that it's fine for us to do that, and that is the practice because our ancestors practiced that. Now, one thing that the colonists, when they came to North America, they brought with them, the Spaniards brought with them horses. And so at one time here in North America, there was an American horse, but that became extinct. And so over time, the oral traditions, we lost knowledge about horses, but the Spaniards brought them here. But at the time, we have always had dogs here. We had dogs. And so our word for dog is chunky. This is our word for dog. 
Our word for big or large is ita. So our ancestors put these two words together, and this is the word for big. They put these two words together to create a word for horse. So big dog, horse. Donkey tying. Sorry, I just said colt. That's the other word, colt. So another word that was written down by linguists is chunkitai, which means cult. And this is literally dog, big, young. And this is pretty characteristic of native languages. Native languages are very descriptive. They use existing words to make new words. And this is, this is what has happened here. This is an example, and this is a very old word because, as I mentioned, whenever the Tudelos, Saponis, and other tribes encountered a horse, they had to have a way to explain it, to, um, to make a word for it. A modern-day example of that is our word for church. Church, Ainkati. Now, this is a word that we didn't have. In other words, the dictionaries and other materials that we use to revitalize our language, we didn't actually have that written down. And so I came up with the word. And this literally means God's house. So this is the word for God, Ainka, and Ati. And so add those two together, and we make God's house. And this is how um, we are modernizing the language in order to use it and um, in order to make it viable for our people today. Now I'm going to sh quickly share a few other words with you, phrases. This is good morning. So this is good morning. This is a greeting. Um, when I was working face to face with uh, some of my colleagues, I would tell them th this every day, kind of humping up be good morning. And this is basically just morning. Good. Good morning. When I opened up today, I told everyone, and that's a good day to you. So that's the hump. Good day. Our word is for day is nahampi. And then our word for good again, and one of our words, uh, we have we have two different words for good in our language. So this is day, good. So these are just a few words um, for you to learn. You can learn these words and say them to your friends or your, your mom or your dad or whoever in the morning. You can say, kanahampanapi, or you can say, good day, nahampipi. And so our time is running down a little bit. But before I go, I'd like to 
share with you uh, a little bit about the efforts that the Hallowasaponi and other communities in North Carolina and Virginia, and really all throughout North America. We have some Tudelo Saponi descendants that live in uh, Canada, Ontario, Canada. We have some that live out in Ohio. And we have others that live all throughout North America that have migrated to different areas. Well, some of the ways that we are actively using the language is in our songs. And that's actually how I started learning about language was to make song phrases when I was around 15 years old, my drum group, Stony Creek, we were singing songs of other tribes and wanted to represent our own tribe. And so uh, myself and others started doing research to learn more about it. Making new words and phrases, um, as I've mentioned, these are some words actually are not in the dictionary. These words are not in the dictionary. These are words that we created in order to be able to talk with each other and use the language. Um, we make, uh, we give people names in the language. A lot of times people have as their first or middle name in the language. So these are some ways that we are actively using the language. I wanna share with you a little bit about how to find out more. And unless, if you can't already tell, um, native people, we are um, modern people. Um, I'm standing here um, in front of a camera. I rode up here in a in a vehicle just like everyone else, but we um, try our best to um, maintain our traditions and culture. And that's how we've survived for over 500 years is by adapting and changing. And that's what we're doing. And so we have an app for that, okay? And so the Living Tongues um, Institute for Endangered Languages, we are, working with them. This is, uh, this is Living Dictionaries. I'm a doctor and my handwriting is terrible. So um, this is Living Dictionaries and you can go on Living Dictionaries um, if you can't see this, just look up Living Dictionaries and you should be able to find it and go look for Tudelosaponi Monacan Living Dictionary and you'll be able to go in there and click on certain words and be able to hear the language spoken. Um, my Twitter handle is at Saponi Nona and this is one of our words for man. So just basically at Saponi Nona um, on Twitter. And then also I will give you my email. So that's my email. This is how to get in touch with us or to learn more. Um, there's also dictionaries out about the Tudelo Saponi language. Um, one was created in 1996 by Julia Oliverio. So if you're interested, um, these are some resources to learn more about the Tulo Saponi language. And so before I go, I'd like to, to say to all of you out there to please uh, be safe, um, keep yourself healthy. If you can, please wear a mask is very important um, for our native people out here. It's very important we encounter diseases and we don't want to um, have another, another pandemic to lessen our numbers and take away our elders and others. And it's very important to do. Um, I would like to thank the North Carolina Museum of History for inviting me here today. It's truly an honor to share a little bit with you about Yesan Hamanketa. Thank you all. Dr. Marvin Richardson, thank you so much for joining us today and for enlightening us about the importance of language and culture for Native peoples here in the state, the great state of North Carolina. We really appreciate you and thank you for all that you've taught us this morning. Thank you.